How's it going folks? It's Rob here and welcome to our small little backyard farm and aquaponics YouTube channel. Today's clip will be on the aquaponics. We'll um, take the camera for a bit of a wander around the system and show you how things are growing. Um, we might start off at the fish. I tossed some feed in for them earlier but I've got a little bit of uh, vision on the camera so you can suss that out while I'm nattering on about them. So these fish are feeding well as you can see from this mobile vision. They um, splashed me quite a few times while I was taking that. Uh, someone asked me the other day if I will be heating the tanks for these guys this winter. Uh, we're coming into winter in the southern hemisphere here. I won't worry about it with these silver perch, but if we had the jade perch, I'd definitely um, be thinking about heating if the temperature dropped, or well, the water temperature dropped much below um, 18 degrees. So, but yeah, not something I have to worry about this season. We might actually just go over and have a look at the uh, pH and the temp, see how they're traveling this afternoon. So we'll just fire up the temperature first. There we go, we're sitting at 22 Celsius, which I think is around about 71 Fahrenheit. We'll just have a bit of a look here, yeah, there we go, 71 Fahrenheit. And as for pH, we should be sitting up um, in the high sixes, I think. I dosed up a little bit earlier with the calcium hydroxide. It's generally sitting around about um, 6, 6 to 7. Um, so yeah, the pH range is fairly good for the fish. So um, I have lost my little handy cam. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that already, but I've lost my little um, little sports cam, so I can't get any vision of those guys at the moment. I think I may have put it down under the house, so if I come across it, definitely take some vision for the next clip. On the plant side of things, they're absolutely booming. Oh, well, some of them are absolutely booming. This Malabar spinach will be taking off a load of leaves from that tonight for a bit of a um, pumpkin, roast pumpkin frittata I want to bake up. Uh, the Kangkong has gone absolutely burko in here. We've been harvesting from this one this week. Uh, the other one over there is turning into quite a monster, so I'll have to start picking off bits and pieces from that this week as well. Just around the front of this bed, we've got a load of Brazilian spinach. Uh, some of this is going to have to come out tonight, mainly because it's starting to crowd out some of my garlic down the front there. So I'll probably take off this whole little section here and pop them in the salad. We'll also be taking out a Wombok, one of these small ones as well as some of the um, leafy greens from over there I'll show you in a tick. We did have one wombok or Chinese cabbage that was a little bit rotten in the core. Uh, there was a few slugs in there, it went all slimy. So I pulled it out and replaced it with a little broccoli seedling. Over the back there, we've got our KY1 uh, bush tomatoes. They're also known as dwarf Scoresby from memory. These guys here, there's two of them, um, just growing in a root pouch there. The idea behind that is trying to see if I can contain the roots. Now, these guys here are supposed to be a semi-determinant bush type tomato, but I am pruning them back, just so I have one main leader on both, uh, just to see how they go. I know some people probably chastise me for that, but I have grown these guys before, and they gave us a number of flushes, well over four or five flushes of fruit through the season. They're not like um, a normal determinant that will give you one, maybe two flush of fruit. So I'm pretty confident that I can get away with pruning these guys back fairly hard. Uh, over here, uh, we have another one. This is just a single plant growing by itself, and I need to give it a bit of a prune. I was speaking to Michael and Dave. G'day, folks. Um, they're a couple of patrons of ours, and they know way more about tomatoes than myself. They pretty much all suggested not to prune back determinants, but because of this one strange growth habit for our climate, I will be knocking this one back to two main growth points. One will be going out that way and one out this way and I'll be just taking out any suckers along the way. Suckers for you folks who aren't quite sure are these little things here. They're new branches that um, take off out of a uh, leaf junction on the stem. There's another one here you can probably make out. So we've got a leaf coming over the back there and this is just a little sucker. So I've just been pinching them out as I see them. And um, I've also been nipping off any of these, um, these leaves that look like they've got a little bit of an infection on them. So I won't do them today in this clip, but I um, will come back probably tomorrow and give them a bit of a prune. And just to show you, we have a couple of tomatoes on already. We have some set down in there and some look like they've set just down in here as well. So first lot of fruit on our tomatoes. We actually haven't had any decent table tomatoes in here since we had the Bundaberg Rumbles over there and some summertime golds. And we also had some Warakawai over in the soil patch. So it's been a few years since we've had some decent table tomatoes. Uh, in this bed here were the beans. Now the beans look like they've been hit really badly by a bean mite that we get here in um, Queensland. So I pulled them out 
I just don't see the point in trying to battle uh, pests continually. So the plants have come out. I've got them put aside and I'm going to be harvesting the beans, which you'll see tonight. Some of the damage is very obvious, as you can see on the bean itself. And there also looks like there's a little bit of a rust infection in this plant as well. I figured I might as well remove them from the system and pop in a few more plants. So we've got a broccoli just there and there is a dill, a little clump of dill seedlings I planted in there. And over the back I've placed another dill in there as well. So dill's one herb we really do love to use fresh, but I'd also like to dry some as well, um, just so we can use it at a later date. The other plants in here, the basil's still holding on. Um, it's got a little bit of burn damage on the end of the leaves and <laughs> that Brazilian spinach has taken off. Over the back there, you can probably see some ginger laying on top of the barrel, so we'll go around and have a gander at that. So earlier today, I pulled out my two remaining clumps of ginger. There was one over there and one on this side of this barrel here. So these guys here, um, as you may recall, if you've been watching our clips this season, um, we had a bit of a problem with the fish in the system. So I put in a lot of salt and ginger doesn't like sodium. So I think I pretty much well stunted all these plants. You can see the rather large mother um, just down the base there, the browner section. That's the, um, the piece of ginger that was planted out. So I think we probably would have been better reading that and not worrying about this. But, you know, I suppose we've got a couple of meals worth of ginger from this plant. Um, this one over here gave us pretty much all about the same amount, if or maybe a little bit less. So we've got a couple of meals out of that as well. So I suppose I can't really complain. Just over here I've started off a cutting of Okinawan spinach. Um, popped it in a couple of weeks ago. It's mother plants just there, so hopefully it will do rather well. It can get a little bit invasive um, in certain seasons, so hopefully being in this barrel by itself it'll save me some pain with other beds being overgrown. And just over in this barrel here I popped in one of the dill plants, uh, just one there and over the back, I'm just sort of smothering. I did pop in a cutting uh, from one of the tomatoes when I pruned the back and we also have another um, section of Okinawan spinach just there. So these barrels hopefully will um, fill out nicely. As you can see they're getting the last of the afternoon sun in this position. And in the last barrel here we have Warrigal Greens. You may remember these as the small seedlings in the last clip. Well, they've definitely taken off. They love it in the aquaponics. So much so that I really have to keep my eye on it. So these guys will be trimmed back fairly regularly. And up the back there we have the Owen Knock, um, which is still doing rather well. I've had a bit of an iron deficiency. Um, that was pointed out to me uh, by a visitor, a couple of visitors uh, who know a lot more than I. So I have been dosing up with the iron a lot more regularly and I'll be going out and getting an iron uh, test kit this week just so I can keep an eye on how much iron we do have in the system. So just behind the barrels we've got another bed. This is another IBC bed. As you can see I've got my hedge of greens here. We've just been um, chopping them back as we need them. They're actually um, Jeff Herriot's Chinese red shallots but we've just been using them as um, green onions. They taste absolutely fantastic. We don't take the stem down too far. We like to leave a little bit of meat on there so they bounce back. The sage down in here doesn't look like it's um, enjoying this shaded spot too much. It never really has done much chop over here. Um, the plant over in the other grow bed, the first one you saw, it's always done a lot better and we've harvested a fair bit from it. This is just a little bit of um, lemongrass I took pity on. I just thought I'd throw it in the corner here when I harvested some for a meal. And we've got some garlic over the back here and a perennial leek as well. The uh, turmeric in here, uh, this plant will be coming out this season. I really don't want to leave it in here again. It created a little bit too much shade for the plants around it, so uh, it does have to come out. Just behind the turmeric there, we have some red celery. We got these from Chris. Thank you very much, mate. There's that one there, and there's another one just over here. Now, this red celery is actually filling out the stalks rather nicely. They're staying nice and firm. The last couple we've grown in the system, they've, they've been rather the hollow but that may be because I was trying to grow them through summer as well. Since things have cooled down these plants are just taken off so I'll be taking some, a few stalks off of these tonight for our salad. Um, we actually progressively harvest our celery. We don't take it all off in one hit and that way we just get continual harvest after harvest from them. Uh, other plants in this bed we have some basil that's been there for quite a while now. Uh, the poor old deer still trying to put out new shoots even though we keep cutting them back so um, we'll see how long she lasts. A little lavender cutting it's taken off nicely so I'm actually going to transplant that somewhere else because it's rather shaded in this position. 
and our time. Um, someone was asking, I don't know if it was Andrew from Veggie Patch in Perth or maybe a um, patron, but yeah, the time is bouncing back now that the salt's been reduced in the system and we've got some new little growth. Where is it? Just down in there. So I think I might be better off buying a new seedling and popping it in. We'll just wait and see. We'll pop around the corner and show you the true extent of this cancong. So the cancong here is rather productive. That's all one plant and it's cascading down to the ground there. Unfortunately, we don't know many people who eat cancong, so some of this is going to end up in the compost heap. I have harvested a bit from down there, but not a lot. Just up the top here is where I've been taking my main harvest. What I've been doing is just snipping off the, the stems as they come through, and they've been replaced by more stems. We let them grow to around about 40 or 30 to 40 centimeters, so just over a foot in length. Chop them off and then they end up going in stir fries. Down in front of these guys, we've got a bit of a mixed sowing of different greens. Um, we've got one of the red celeries down in there, uh, rabbit ear lettuce, that one there will be coming up for tonight. Some garlic chives, which we haven't harvested for a while. A little bit of rosemary. And we have beetroot. Our beetroot has the fungus. Um, it's a pretty prevalent fungus. You get it in a lot of um, beet crops. They are forming up um, down the base there, so I might leave them another week or so just to see how they go. I noticed yesterday that this one's putting out some um, healthy leaves from the centre, so there may be something it outgrows, I'm not too sure. The garlic down here is doing alright. We've got some random sowings of celtus, more rabbit ear lettuce, some basil, and there is some um, Chinese amaranth being shaded out down the back there. There's one thing I forgot to show you over here. This little turmeric didn't do much chop at all through the season. Again, I think it was due to the salt content. But in the last month or so, it's put on a lot of growth. Uh, it seems as it's the time of year that these plants normally die back. Um, I'm thinking I might just leave this section in the bed. Worst case scenario becomes um, worm food, but I thought I might just leave it for another season to see how it goes. And um, next year I might end up putting some more ginger in this bed, seeing as it's done so well in there before. Um, what I think I might do is I might um, do a bit of a harvest and I'll show you what we're taking up for dinner. So there you go folks, a nice little bag of greens from the system. I did pull out more Brazilian spinach than I need. Um, some of it may end up in the frittata itself. But all these greens will go in the salad tonight. Um, we'll probably take it easy on the rabbit ear lettuce and um, pop some in the fridge for um, curried egg and lettuce sandwiches, a bit of a favourite here. But the rest of this should all be chowed down on tonight. So there you go. And as you can see, there's not, not a huge dent in the greenery in the system from that harvest. On the weekend I posted a clip moaning and groaning about how bad the, um, the wicking beds have gone for us. We've just had problems with um, root intrusion basically. The aquaponics has definitely well and truly picked up the slack in growing our greens. We've just had crop after crop from the Okinawan spinach, uh, then the cancong, the mushroom herb, um, the celery, the lettuces that pop up here and there. It's absolutely phenomenal the amount of growth you can get from your greens in a system like this. So I definitely um, encourage you folks who are interested in a bit of more technical gardening, tinkering with pipes and plumbing and growing your own fish as well, to at least consider aquaponics and, and contemplate setting up a small little system for yourself. I've got a playlist you can suss out if you want to look into aquaponics a little bit more and building your own system. And there's a load here on YouTube as well, as well as, you know, forums like the Backyard Aquaponics Forum and different Facebook groups as well. There's loads of helpful people out there who will, you know, give you a bit of a leg up and point you in the right direction on setting up your own system. So anyway, I'll stop spruiking aquaponics for now. So quickly before this sun blinds me as it sets, I'd like to do a huge shout out to you all out there in YouTube land who come along week after week and you know listen to my hairy mug natter on about aquaponics or soil patch also to you fabulous patrons who are helping to support the channel i'm really enjoying the um bi-monthly hangouts as they're turning out to be with you third tier patrons just chatting about anything as well as aquaponics and gardening sometimes i really do have a ball so i will pretty much all sign off there i need to take lizzie for a walk and get dinner sorted I do hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic week and your gardens and aquaponic systems are booming and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers folks, have a top one. You can tell we're real pros here folks. We, we have a couple of chefs that will be watching this Bianca. We'll probably well, be... All I can say is I'm sorry. <laughs>
go. Good thing Kira's doing the dishes tonight. 